A good Thursday night for the men's and women's basketball team getting back-to-back -back wins. I'm Jared Oliver, alongside with me, my partner, as we like to call him, the Deacon. The David, Deacon. David Chili. Yeah. We'll start with the women's as they held off a pretty good Texas State Bobcat team, 73-62. Mm -hmm. uh, Madison, ne Madison Newby, 15.6 rebounds. And they actually got their impactful players to actually suit up and play. Uh, a couple of numbers, Makiba Ponder, Missed six of the last ten games. Tatiana Jackson missed the last twelve. Ke Kiara Henry missed the last five. Astasia Titer missed the last four. So they finally actually got their entire team to actually suit up. Some of them missing some t some time because mm -hmm. of team violations. Mm -hmm. So I mean, of course, we actually got to see a team not get blown out and actually show some consistency. Yeah. Uh, I was very excited to see Ponder and Titer back. Now, of course, the last show I had a few words for them. Mm -hmm. um, I have since calmed down. To say and, the least. Yeah, to say the least. And I, I, I was happy to see them because they, not having them hurt. Yeah. Yeah, the, the women's team was really hurting without them. Ponder is a fantastic scorer. Okay, Definitely. she is a fantastic, and she and she showed it tonight, man. Ponder, she had uh, 12 points tonight, and that that was crucial. Yeah. So uh, I was happy to see her tighter. She she contributed. She had five rebounds. She's a, a a very good team player. The offense just seems to orchestrate well when she's on the court. So. Definitely, and also better defensively. They mm -hmm. held them to 30 percent shooting, which yeah. is very impressive. They were able to knock down some shots when possible. Still, some shots that didn't fall, or mm -hmm. they made some bad passes. But yeah. overall. They played pretty solid to get a pretty good win over a four-seeded Texas State team. Yep. And they also knocked down some free throws, 16 mm -hmm. of 23. So we were able to see them definitely play much better and improve from the Little Rock game, which was completely a disappointment. Yeah, um, they couldn't get much worse than that. And, of course, like we said, they were missing Ponder and Titer, and, and that, that hurt them. But they, they took a butt whooping over there. And it, it, it was one of those, those games where it was very, very difficult to watch. Mm -hmm. um, and I just – it. I, d I wanted to turn it off. I really did. And I was very disappointed in that performance. But they came back today, and they showed, they showed their attitude because they came out fast. They started off uh, very strong. You could tell the attitude was different. And uh, even though Ponder and Titer didn't start, you could tell that like, the, the spirit was there. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. the, the team knew that they were yeah. going to come off the bench and contribute. And, and they did, like, like we just mentioned before. So um, very, very excited for the women to get back um, on track. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it was good to see their energy, the passion. Uh, what now has to happen mm -hmm. is they have to gel and have some type of chemistry yeah. because they've had they've had four players that didn't play that were impactful players. They recruited them for a reason and mm -hmm. they can play and they can perform as we know they can. But now they have to perform and gain some gain some consistency so we can see this team actually put some wins together yep. now that they have all their players back. And you know I think the main thing for them now is to. Ex execute. I think yeah. that's the main thing for them. I mean, if you look back last last game, mm -hmm. they looked totally awful. They, oh yeah. They couldn't not turn the ball over to save their lives if they tried. It was just completely awful. Much a much better performance, and I'm glad they got the win. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to see them win. But like you said, they have to stay consistent, and I think that's been the problem with this basketball team mm -hmm. is being able to win consistently and play well consistently. Because even in this game, they started off strong, but then they just they went to sleep. They went Absolutely. to sleep and they lost the lead and they found themselves in a battle against a team that, to me, honestly, they were better than. Yeah. They, they are more talented than Texas State. And there was, to me, there was really no reason for them to build a lead like that and then just lose it and have to, you know, battle back. Now, luckily, they were, they were um, forced enough to come away with an 11-point win. Absolutely. But, they're, hey, they're better than 11 points than, than Texas State. So, yeah. uh, to be able to win is good, but you, you got you to gotta really win and win consistently. Yeah, and a little bit of more criticism uh, towards the late end of the second half when mm -hmm. they were about to close out the win. Uh, they didn't handle some things well. They turned the ball over. Yeah. They, you know, fouled when they weren't supposed to. Just uh, some of those things that you have to work on just to close games out more appropriately. Definitely. Uh, to, you know, just something that great teams do. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't noticed yet, there is a ball on the table with a P on it. And, you know, we do these things called game balls. Right. So now we actually have a physical game ball. Woo. Who are you giving yours to? Man, this thing is beautiful, man. <laughs> I, I can't stop looking at it. And I, I'm going to give it to... First time the ball has been on the show. Yeah, I first know, time. I know you yeah. guys are probably wondering, what is that on the table? Well, it's actually a basketball with primetime sports talk. Pretty cool. And I just, I can't stop looking at it, man. So who's your, who's your game ball? My game ball, I'm going to give it to McKeever Ponder. Okay. Um, you know, I, I said some things about her last week, about how Just her breaking team rules was uh, despicable. 
and things like that, and how uh, she was irresponsible and it was selfish uh, what she did. The same thing went to Titer. But Ponder showed up tonight with 12 points. Um, you know what? No, no, forget that. We're one take Drake. I'm changing my mind. I'm changing my mind right now. Two takes. Two, you, look, <laughs> Madison Newby gets my game ball. Ah, there we go. I'm sorry. I, I, look, Madison Newby is my favorite player on that basketball team. This is why. She had 15 points tonight, but I've said it before. She is one of the toughest basketball players I've ever seen in my life. She, tonight, she missed the free throw, but here's the thing. When the ball was in the air, she screamed, short, because she knew the ball was going to be short. She ran around everybody lined up for the free throw and almost grabbed her own rebound. Now, she was pushed, and the ball was forced out of bounds. But the fact that she knew her free throw was short and had the hustle and toughness to go and get her own rebound, that was super impressive. I don't know why I said ponder. Great job, 12 points. Madison Newby's my girl, though. <laughs> and she's getting the game ball. That, the ball was so beautiful, it distracted me, man. I apologize, yeah. but go ahead, man. Well, you stole mine. I'm going to go with Madison Newby as well. 15 yeah. points, six rebounds. Uh, great performance. I think what's, in, what's impressive about her is that she's a freshman, and mm -hmm. uh, the past couple of games, she hasn't had anyone to actually uh, back her up. Because yeah. when she made mistakes, she had to play through it because they didn't have any more players to substitute right. for her. So I think this is a great learning curve for her. And I think it's, it's very impressive to see a young freshman freshman drive to the basket like that and be very aggressive. And it's really impressive to watch. And she's going to be a pretty great player for this team, I think so. Yeah. So that's my, that's my game ball for the winners. So, so two, two, two game balls for Madison Newby. Two game balls. Yeah. Well deserved. Well deserved, man. But we're going to move on to the men as they survive yet another close one, squeezing by Texas State 59 to 56. Marcus Kreider had a team high and career high, 24 points, and he also was able to grab four rebounds. Mm -hmm. um, a slow start in the first half, yep. but they were able to pick it up and get a good win uh, off of a subpar team. But it was good for them to finally get a win, a win in the column coming off a three-game uh, road trip. Losing yeah. all three games. Yeah, that, that road trip was very tough for them. And I, I, I asked Marcus Kreider if they felt pressure, and they said no. They didn't feel any pressure. Mm -hmm. They just had to do what they had to do, which is true, because when they were on the road, they weren't doing what they had to do. They were playing pretty poorly. So to, to see them get back to, you know, Georgia State basketball tonight was great. They mm -hmm. controlled the tempo for the most part, and especially in the second half, which was good to see. And, and they, they did what they were supposed to do defensively. Yeah. Um, one of the things that stood out about Georgia State's defense for the past few games was their perimeter defense and how subpar that's been. Yeah. Um, they've allowed how many threes was it? Well, actually, yeah, I did my own research. Yeah. In the past couple of games, I want to say the past five games, they have allowed 50, last six games, they've allowed, allowed 53 three-pointers. Yeah. That's a lot of three-pointers. If you can cut that in half or maybe even just a little bit, they mm -hmm. may have won some more ball games. Yeah. So I think the perimeter defense has shown some increasing levels of concern, lack of communication, and mm -hmm. I think Ron Hunter has come to grips as they are who they are. Yep. They aren't, they aren't the best scoring team. They're actually dead last in the Sun Belt in scoring. Yep. I think around 60 to 65 points, if I remember correctly. And I think they have to win games and stay in the games based on defense. They have to scratch and claw mm -hmm. their ways into ball games. And I think he realizes that, and at this point, they have to take every game just one game at a time they can't look too yep. far ahead because it seems as if the NCAA tournament is out of out of sight for now mm. so I think now they have to look at each game as try to win that I mean they play everybody everyone they've lost to they play them again so yep. I think at this point they have to look for uh, some consistency and just know who they are and realize what type of team they are because they are I mean they are they are who they are they're not the best scoring team they don't have a player that they can go to mm. late in the game as to last year yeah well I, I agree with you about the NCAA statement. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I do not see Georgia State winning the Sun Belt Conference title this year, a, as of right now. Mm -hmm. If that changes and they pick it up, cool. But I'm with you. I, I do not see it. Yeah. Um, and you made the point about a perimeter defense. Well, we've been talking about it for a little bit. They allowed six three-pointers tonight, which is a good thing because of how bad they've been. But overall, but for the overall. course of the last past games, yeah. it's just been too many, 53 three-pointers. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. And allowing six tonight would, you know, maybe for a very good defensive team, that'd be terrible. But for Georgia State, that's actually good to see that. And the big difference in this game was definitely, I'd say, free throws because Georgia State won this game by three. Yeah, seven and eight, seven of eight in the first half. Mm -hmm. And 
they hit three more free throws yeah. than Texas State. Overall, 13 for 18 for the entire game. Texas State was 10 for 16. Yeah. Free throws win ball games. Definitely. Absolutely. Ever since back in the day. Oh, but, yeah. Um, I think overall a great win to gain some confidence mm -hmm. for them. But, I mean, we have to go back and look at, you know, just – I want to bring up Jeff Thomas because, I mean, like even with a guy like that, yeah. which we, we bring up inconsistency, mm -hmm. and we need to understand that, you know, they are who they are, but yeah. Jeff Thomas, he'll have a 17-point game, and then all of a sudden he'll have back-to-back -back games where he doesn't score. I mean, tonight he hit two three-pointers, and he yep. was able to find get to the cup and score eight points. But, but wasn't that all in the first half? Yeah, but this is what I'm talking about as far as the inconsistencies. And they don't have guys who are necessarily inconsistent. Mm -hmm. And even with a night like tonight with Kevin Ware not playing uh, very productive, I think he finished with six points. Yep. And the past couple of games, he's been doing everything. And he can't do it by himself. So, like I said, overall, a decent win. But now we're going to move off. We're going to move on to game balls okay. for the men's. What you got, David? Uh, I'm going to give it... This one is a little bit it tough. It should be easy. It should be easy, but I'm trying to be all original and different. Yeah. I'm giving it to Coach Ron Hunter. Okay. Because tonight, Why? he won his 100th game. Mm. He is only the third coach in Georgia State basketball history to win 100 games. Impressive. And, and you know what? He didn't even know that. Yeah. He, he didn't know until he was on his way downstairs to do our press conference. And he, he's going to retrieve the ball, or he may have retrieved it by now. Hope, hopefully he did, because that's a ball he should keep in his case. 100 games to Coach 100. This is your game ball, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my game ball. Oh, my ball gosh. To Marcus Kreider, 24 points, four <laughs> rebounds, career high. Absolutely amazing. I got to give it to him, man, because he, yeah. he had a bad game the last past couple of games. So yep. it's good to see him rebound. and. That's who I'm going to give it to. So that's my game ball for the Are you sure you're not, you're not giving it to women's. yourself? No, it's not mine. Because you just grabbed the yeah, thing. I'll put it back. My goodness. Yeah, I was feeling a little, uh, ah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's cool, man. I'm Jared Oliver alongside with me, David Shilley. Thanks for watching another edition of Primetime Sports Talk. We'll see you next time.